Well, Everton have been flying high at the top of the Premier League table, unbeaten so far this season in all competitions. Shaka Hislop is here with me because, Shaka, who would have thought they would have met their match in Southampton? A trip to St. Mary's that the Toffees will want to forget after losing 2-0 to the Saints. Shaka, how did Southampton pull this off? I, I really don't know. Coming to this one, I thought this was all about Everton, given the the run that been, they've been on and, and I know they, they dropped points against Liverpool and, and maybe a little bit lucky um, uh, to, to at least get a point out of that one. But I didn't see this kind of performance coming. Everything about this 90 minutes has been in complete contrast to what we'd seen and, and maybe come to expect from Everton th this season. I, I thought it was inept, it was flat, you were looking for some kind of inspiration, Hamish Rodriguez. Um, wasn't the wasn't player today that, that he had been all season long. You were looking for a spark somewhere for, from Everton and it just, it just never came. And, and that for me was the surprising thing to it. From a Southampton perspective, when you realise that Everton were as flat or maybe as complacent, what, I, I'm not sure where, exactly where, where the blame lies, you take full, full advantage of that. And I thought Southampton did. They were easily the better uh, of, of the two teams, fully deserving of their 2-0 win, maybe even a little bit more. They played some good football. They were deserving of it. Um, that I, I don't question. I do question Everton's, um, uh, how, how, how flat they, they, they were over the course of this one. That's true. It was, it was strange because it did look like um, Everton were definitely lacking something, that spark, um, almost mm. as if they were tired. But, I mean, to add to that concern, if we do want to start being concerned for Carlo Ancelotti and his men, um, we do know that Seamus Coleman, the veteran at Everton, of course, he has a bit of an injury. We now see Luca Dinia, who's going to be serving a bit of a ban. Richarlison already serving a ban as well. So some of these regular first-team players not there for Everton at a time where they would want to continue riding this momentum and stay as close to the top of the table as possible. So where does Carlo Ancelotti look now? What does he do to see that they don't become a victim of their own early success? Listen, I, I think some of Everton's problems were of their own making. And, and yes, you can, you can point to Richarlison, uh, red card. That was of, of, of his own making. Um, and now they, they'll have to deal without, without the cope without Digne. Listen, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence with, with the Digne red card. Mm. In real time, I thought it, it, it looked like, like a, a, a sitting red. Replays for me suggested that maybe yellow was appropriate. So we, we'll see what, what comes of that over the, the next couple of days. Um, but, but the issue for me here, and, and as I look at at, at how that the first half in particular was played. When you see the two Southampton goals, there was not a single Everton challenge in either of those two goals, either in the build-up or when the ball eventually got, got into the box. There was, there was nothing from Everton to suggest that they were really intent on winning the ball back. They were really intent on, on trying to find a spark somewhere. The first challenge I noticed in, in, in the game came, uh, first Everton challenge, let, let me be specific, came from Allen and Ryan Bertrand in the 60th minute, wide out on, on, on the right-hand side in, in much of a, you know, a nondescript area. But at, at, that, at, at least it was a challenge, which I had not seen in the first hour of this game. Now you're sec your second best. You are looking for some kind of an inspiration. James Rodriguez is human after all and is having a human performance. And you're looking for a spark from somewhere. Maybe it has to come in you just making this a physical game. Because as of right now, in terms of a, a, a footballing encounter, you're losing. So now something has to change. And at no point did I see that coming from, from Everton, as I mentioned, up until the 60th minute mark, at which point the game is, is, is probably already done. You're looking for something to, to get yourself back in the game. That, you don't need person, person, uh, personalities to do that. You don't need individual players, whether it's, it's Shima Skorman or anybody else, to, to, to be that spark. Anybody on the field could have done that for Everton. And I, and I thought that's where, they found, that's where they found themselves lacking. That's where I wanted to see some kind of a response. And it never came. And that, for me, is, is the biggest surprise to this performance. 
how how poor Everton were from from start to finish. The fact that they never tried to change the the um, the complexion of this game or how they how they went about it, uh, and 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 the, the fact that, that nobody recognised the need to step up and and make that difference. So are you kind of suggesting that there might be a little more deeper problems with this Everton team than probably this just being a not a one off but just another bad day bad day that happens in football. And listen, right now, given where you were and, and this performance, you say, listen, this was a one-off. We really were that bad. Um, and and we, can, we can turn it around. If, if you're Everton, that's what you say. If I'm on the Everton coaching staff and I'm looking at the video at, at the end of this game, and, and I mentioned the fact that there was not a challenge on the board made, ball made in, in the build-up to either of the two goals. Also looking at the two goals, when the ball arrives in the box, Everton have six little blue green. I don't even know what color it was. Shirts in the box and and, and around the ball. So you, you have you have position to to defend both of those attacks. You have bodies to suggest that it shouldn't those, those balls shouldn't find their way into the back of the net as as easy as as they did. That for me is is something that the coaching staff has to address. The other parts about it, in terms of changing, as I term, the complexion of the game, making it a physical battle, that's about personalities on the field. That's about your leaders. And on the day, um, Everton didn't have leaders on the field, uh, and the coaching staff quite clearly have, have their work cut out for them. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.